So my name is Anodi, and today I will be presenting about Bitcoin. So the structure of my presentation is pretty simple. I'm going to discuss what Bitcoin is, then I'm going to discuss why we should care about Bitcoin, and finally I'm going to talk about how to use Bitcoin. So let's begin. What is Bitcoin? So first thing you do whenever you want to know about something is you Google it. This is what Google says. All right? It's a type of digital currency in which encryption techniques are used to regulate the generation of units of currency and verify the transfer of funds operating independently of a central bank. Let's dive into that. All right. First, what is a digital currency? Digital currency is pretty much, you know, Google again. Google's great. Yeah, like I especially love that feature where you put in something and it tells you the definition right above. Like, it's great. But pretty much digital currency is anything that's made on the internet. And some very famous platforms that use digital currencies are World of Warcraft, shout out to Joe, as well as Xbox Live, which uses Microsoft points. So anything that's on the internet um, and has instantaneous transactions, right? So now Bitcoin is created in the internet and has instantaneous transactions. Cool. Also, it's borderless. So nation to nation doesn't really matter. It's nations don't matter with uh, digital currencies. Oops, sorry about that. All right. So now let's talk about encryption. So I'm not going to dive too deep into what Bitcoin encryption is. You guys can ask me questions about it. I'm not like an expert, but I have been trying to learn more about it. But the very like, overall gist of it is that transactions are going to be gathered in a block. This block is then hashed, and these hashed blocks are all gathered together in something called a general ledger. Now, what miners do is that they compete to hash these blocks because the Bitcoin protocol has very specific uh, specifications for how these hashes have to look, and everyone competes to sort of get the right hash. And when you get a right hash, you get 25 Bitcoin. So that's sort of like the very overall gist of what the encryption uh, for Bitcoin is. You have a bunch of blocks that have a bunch of transactions on them. And then these transactions are composed into a block. These blocks are verified by miners. These, and then they form one huge blockchain that lets you see any transaction between two Bitcoin accounts. So. Now, one of the most uh, central features is, is decentralization of Bitcoin. Pretty much uh, the best way to explain this is to compare Bitcoin to the US dollar. Now, the US dollar is uh, maintained and produced by the central bank. You, as an individual, cannot go to your house and print money because that is illegal. But you, as an individual, can use your computer and try to mine Bitcoin. You probably won't be too successful, but you can definitely try. And in the earlier stages of Bitcoin, you would have had some luck. So that right there demonstrates the difference between a currency, like a physical currency like the US dollar and Bitcoin. There's a bunch of machines out there that don't necessarily uh, have to rely on each other that are constantly trying to create new Bitcoin. So it's decentralized. Whereas with money, with most currencies, there's one central authority that controls the regulation as well as the creation of this uh, currency. So decentralized Bitcoin, uh, centralized real money. So, to wrap up, not to wrap up, but like wrap up the definition of what a Bitcoin is, all right? So we have Bitcoins are a cryptocurrency, meaning that they're a digital currency that uses encryption techniques for its creation regulation, as well as being decentralized. Decentralization meaning that there's a computer network out there that controls the creation and regulation of them. So instead of having one central authority do this, we have a network of computers doing it. All right, so why should we care? Why should we use Bitcoin? Well, those two characteristics lead to some very interesting reasons. And these four reasons, in my opinion, are it's fast, it's cheap, it's private, and like I said before, it's decentralized. So let's dive into those. It's fast. Well, um, like I said, digital currencies happen instantaneously. A transaction that's occurring from the United States to China can happen instantly, right? But uh, with Bitcoin specifically, it'll take 10 minutes. 10 minutes for miners to verify your transaction. And there's actually new methods in which uh, the merchant can bear the risk of you not having a verified transaction, and this will lead to an instant, instant uh, transaction. So it's fast. It's cheap. Uh, I don't know if any, any of you guys have ever tried to send money to a different country. My family does it uh, quite often because we send money to the Dominican Republic, and someone always takes some of the money for themselves. It's not like you're gonna send $100 and $100 you're gonna get to your family member. Someone's going to take some of that, right? If you just do uh, Bitcoin address to Bitcoin address, like public key to public key, that in itself has no transaction cost. 
Whereas, like, there are now, like, uh, providers like Coinbase and, uh, really Coinbase is the only way I can think off the top of the head, but I know there's other exchanges out there that will take some of the cut, but nowhere near as much as most uh, banks do. So it's cheap. It's private. Uh, once again, depending on how you conduct your Bitcoin uh, transactions, you don't, you don't necessarily mean that it's going to be uh, private for you. Like, uh, if you do a lot of transactions on one address by itself, then some people can probably identify you. If you use Coinbase, you will be identified. But there are methods where you can conduct uh, transactions through Bitcoin and no one will know who you are. So it's definitely possible to be private, where your name is not attached to your source of income. And finally, it's decentralized. So there's no one uh, failure point. Like, if the central bank goes down, it's down. Like, there's, like now the US government is going to have a problem, which I don't think is going to happen. But um, <laughs> Bitcoin is decentralized. So there's no one point of failure. And also, there's no way for like, someone from Bitcoin's organization to try to like, take your Bitcoin away from you. Like, I don't know if you guys have read about Cyprus. Like, Cyprus, the uh, central bank started imposing limits on how much you can deposit, started trying to get money, try to get uh, people who de uh, deposit over $100,000 to give some of that money back. Like, there's no central authority that has control over your money. You pretty much own your money, aren't in control of it. Cool. So, finally, for us JavaScript developers, how do we actually use Bitcoin? How do we start accepting Bitcoin, transacting with Bitcoin? Like, like why is it awesome? Right? Well, the main part is it's easy. It's really easy to use JavaScript to use Bitcoin. So let's look at how. Yeah, how do we use Bitcoins? All right, so I'm going to be talking about two specific APIs that I had a little, a little bit of experience with due to the Bitcoin hackathon, and that is Chain and Coinbase. So let's dive into Chain. So what is Chain? Chain is pretty much an organization that is uh, on the forefront of blockchain technology. And they have created an, a, a really good API that allows you to use uh, Bitcoin really easily. So let's look at some code. Oh, well, OK, so the steps for Chain. Uh, you create an API, uh, you sign up for Chain API, create an API key, npm install, Chain node. npm install is great, man, really great. And then you become a Bitcoin master. So let's look at some code. So uh, there's also another library I use called Bitcore. Bitcore is like just used to create uh, public and private keys. So it's not really like the main focus. That's not how you translate. It doesn't really let you like interact with the chain, but it lets you create public and uh, private keys. So you have Bitcore, then you have chain. You create a new chain with your ID in secret. And then right here is where you're creating your addresses. Right? So this is just using FSG to create a callback on a Google sign-in, right? Google ID. And whenever someone signs in with Google, you assign like a private key and an address to that user. So now we have, now your user has a private key and a public key. So this is where Chain comes in. So Chain lets you take information about that uh, public key, uh, that public address you have, and give you stuff like imbalance, how much they've received, uh, a lot of really great stuff. So the way you do it is really simple, right? You require a Chain node, and you create a chain with your ID, your blockchain. So I'm using the testnet, because Bitcoin is $250, so I'm not trying to really transact $250. But uh, you can do everything you can do with the testnet, you can do on LiveNet. Um, that's all you have to do. You change that one line, and you go from testnet to LiveNet. So then here, whenever someone wants to get user info, I send back their balance, how much they've received, how much they've sent, just by doing these one little commands. Very simple. Chain is amazing. All right? um, so this is how you get information about a user. To actually transact is even better. Like, so now to transact, Chain has this great function that says transact. And what it does is it takes one object, which is like sort of the person that's initiating the transaction, and then it has another object that's the person that's receiving the money. And um, so the main uh, drawback to this is security. Uh, in my database, and Kim, please don't hack me, but uh, I have like very little uh, security, and I have saved, I'm storing private keys, which is just not like, like, it's, so, like if you are really cool with security and you go and like, really uh, make your site secure, then you can start generating public and private keys and like, really maintain a wallet. But this is where API providers really shine. And now we're going to talk about Coinbase. So Coinbase is like the biggest service right now, the biggest exchange, the most successful exchange for transacting Bitcoin. And they have a great API. So how do you, how do, you do Coinbase? Pretty similar to any other OAuth that we've done before. Right? You get an API key. You npm install a password Coinbase, and as well as their Coinbase uh, a, a, what's it called? API uh, user, and you use plain old OAuth. So this is like the OAuth 
for Coinbase. And it's pretty much just like copy and paste of FSG OAuth with Chainbase, right? With, uh, with Coinbase. So the only difference is right here, your client, you require Coinbase and you make it a client. And then you have client ID, you have client secret, you have, uh, oh yeah, here, you know, you get the value from the environment, which sets up the, uh, just like any other OAuth, right? You have a client ID, client secret, callback URL, and then, yep, uh, yeah, and then you hit, you hit the routes, like slash off, slash callback, uh, slash Coinbase, and then pretty much just copy and paste from Google or anything else, and you get all this information. You have scope as well, like Coinbase API is really great. So uh, to wrap up, pretty much Bitcoin is, I'm not gonna say the future because it's like kind of um, volatile and people, like there's a bunch of other cryptocurrencies that are emerging and they might actually become the future. But the, the notion of cryptocurrencies and replacing a central authority to manage everyone's money is definitely becoming an archaic term. And I definitely see a future where people are much more comfortable using their computers to generate their currencies. Um, Bitcoin has a bunch of advantages. It's fast, it's cheap, it uh, makes you private, and it's decentralized. And yeah, you guys should all start like, accepting Bitcoin because it's really not that hard. Um, yeah. <laughs> Don't have that much. Uh, but these are some resources. So this third article right here, if you want to get into the nitty gritty of like blockchain and like how it works, that third article is what you want to read. Um, it's really, it's really interesting. And then these article, CoinDesk also offers like pretty like uh, user friendly information about Bitcoin. And I made a Bitcoin app that like transacts stuff. So if you want to look at my source code and see how I did it, it's called Legacy Bit. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs>